the case study is a very interesting and a very flexible research approach and it leaves a lot of choices for the researcher uh, there there could be just one case which is very interesting and very relevant and uh, the uh, researcher finds out uh, all about that one particular case or there could be multiple cases where there is a theme running through those cases and the researcher's job is to find out what those themes are in certain cases it may be generalizable in other cases it may not be generalizable so there are a lot of questions about research design and uh, how to do those case studies what are the evidence and how do we analyze those evidences how do we interpret those evidences so in today's presentation i'm going to have a de detailed discussion about all these things so before we start talking about case studies it's important to talk about what a case is so case could be just an instance it could be just an incident which has happened or it could be a uh, a person an organization it could be an event which has taken place it could be a decision which the executive has taken it could be an action by by some entity it could be a location it could be a neighborhood it could be a nation state so the, uh, there there is a lot of uh, flexibility and and variability in in the kind of cases that we uh, study in a case study research it could be located at the micro level at the individual level it could be located at the meso which is between the micro and the, and the macro level so it could be at the organization or the in, or the institutional level or it could be at the macro level as uh, as well you know talking in terms of societies or communities and it may as i said uh, at the beginning it may involve just one actor or we could be uh, dealing with multiple uh, number of actors uh, as cases and there are uh, very many uh, uh, you know definitions of of case study so we'll just talk about uh, some of the more uh, popular ones so at, at its very simplest uh, yin uh, uh, describes case study as a study of a case or cases within a real life setting and within a contemporary context as well so the real life setting is important and the contemporary context is important here as well uh, we'll improve on this definition and uh, yin himself has improved on this definition later on so we'll we'll talk about that as well so a uh, case study is not just by the methods that we are using but the edges and we talk about the foundations we put around the case so whether we are talking about a, a particular place and how do we describe that particular place or it could be a time frame between certain times or it could be around certain people so what are the ed edges or what are the uh, boundaries we put across the cases that we are studying and that's a very important decision to make in case study research uh, another very important uh, definition is by Schramm from 1971 and he suggests that the essence of a case study is that it tries to illuminate a decision or set of decisions. That means why those decisions were taken, how they were implemented and what were the results of those decisions. So basically it tries to study those decisions. Uh, it is also an uh, in-depth study of a single unit or a, a relatively bounded phenomenon where the scholar's aim is to elucidate features of a larger class of seminal uh, phenomena so this gerings definition is uh, uh, more in, in terms of generalizability so when we study a uh, single unit uh, in an in-depth manner and uh, where, where the foundations are described and the uh, our job is to elucidate features of a larger class of a similar phenomenon uh, so just to improve on the first definition the case study is an empirical method that investigates a contemporary phenomenon in depth within its real world context especially when boundaries between phenomenon and context may not be clearly evident so this uh, 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 phenomenon is related to the context and that relation might not be clearly evident so the job of the researcher is to uh, kind of uh, make these uh, boundaries very clear or make this relation between the context and the phenomenon clear so uh, before we get into the describing these research case studies it's important uh, to to realize that uh, in common parlance we use uh, the term case uh, studies or, or case for for a lot of non research methods uh, or, or uh, non research case studies which may, which do not follow a research method and may not be uh, concerned with uh, conventional uh, social science procedures so they could inc include a teaching practice case studies it could be about uh, popular case studies which we see in in in, uh, in uh, popular media and uh, in in mainstream media or it could also be case records so when we are talking of research case studies we are not talking about these uh, non research cases 
So uh, again, there are two very important decisions we uh, need to take and uh, we'll, we'll draw on uh, Robert Stake's work, uh, which is a very interesting book on uh, case studies. So uh, either uh, the intent could be intrinsic or instrumental. In the intrinsic case, as I said, uh, it's, it's about one uh, individual case, a unique case that has an unusual interest in it, uh, in itself. And it needs to be described in a detailed manner. So when the intent is intrinsic, we are just concentrating on that one single unique case, which has a certain uh, unusual uh, properties or which has certain uh, unusual things to display. And uh, our job is to describe and uh, provide a detailed account of that particular case. So the study is, is about the particularity and the complexity of the case. So, so uh, why, why is it different and, and why, why, is it, why is it complex? So it's not sampling research as, as we'll see. It's not about uh, finding out to, to demonstrate about uh, other similar events, but it's uh, our first obligation as a researcher is to understand this one single case. We do not study a case primarily to understand other cases, but we are providing a very rich understanding of a uh, this single case. So as in, in uh, all qualitative research, it's, it's, it's the richness of, of the understanding and the richness of the description that is more important. So uh, d uh, we have uh, the descriptive case studies as an example where the research objective is to provide a complete detailed portrayal of some phenomenon. And why do we do that? So that we can get the story down for the possible benefit of the policymakers, of uh, scholars in the field and other citizens at large. So here the effort is not to engage with other existing scholarship, either theoretical or empirical. It's just to describe this particular case, uh, drawing on the methods of uh, document review, of participant observation, of in-depth interviews. And we'll talk of uh, such uh, 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 methods in, in details in our presentation later on as well. But the idea is to provide a detailed, complete portrayal of this single phenomenon. And the uh, sometimes this uh, emphasis on description, it uh, uh, involves only a single case. So as we'll see, it, it could be the life history of an individual or a particular event or an organization or some other group. And other uh, types, when we are using multiple cases, we are trying to uh, uh, see the commonalities in those different cases and the description is in portraying those commonalities across these cases. So uh, often there are, there are lots of things uh, uh, concerning uh, generalizability. So it, um, in many cases uh, we see that uh, typicality or trying to generalize is not the uh, intent of the researcher in most cases. So in the single descriptive case we are uh, we may say it, uh, see it in some uh, sense as typical or average, but that is not always the uh, case. Uh, uh, we can also think of it as contributing to naturalistic generalization. So we are providing a very rich description of an event. So based on people's own uh, experiences and uh, on their own ideas, they may draw their own generalizations naturally. So we are providing just an input in the generalization process or we are also providing an input for an analytical uh, generalization. So we are providing all the uh, uh, things that are relevant and important about a particular case so that if people want to draw uh, an analytic generalization, so it helps in that. So uh, from uh, not being generalizable to contributing to generalization, the case uh, research method has a lot of things to contribute. And uh, in the instrumental case, as uh, distinct from the intrinsic case we, uh, we just saw, where we were just concentrating on one single case, in the instrumental case, the intent is to study a specific issue or a problem or a con concern. So it could be like, you know, uh, social media trolling, for example, and we select cases to best understand the problem. So we could be, uh, you know, taking cases where, where people are trolling or, or being trolled. So we take all those relevant cases and we try to understand that particular problem. So uh, instrumental is again one of the uh, uh, two very important intents in the case study research method. And uh, uh, there is an in-depth exploration from multiple perspectives in, in, in such a case uh, about the complexity, about the uniqueness of, of these uh, particular projects. It could be a policy, it could be an institution, it could be a program or, or system in real life context. 
so the uh, the the, the uh, results uh, are uh, is are based on evidence or, or our inferences are based on uh, evidence and it is research based and it can include very many different methods and we'll see that uh, within the case study we, we can uh, involve uh, very many other different methods as well so uh, we uh, uh, find out what are the themes as we just saw that you know in the instrumental method we are looking for themes and then we look for specific cases to uh, uh, look for such themes in these cases so these themes could be specific situations and uh, uh, the finding of a case study involves description of the individual case and the themes that the researcher has uncovered in uh, studying that case so, so uh, we could be seeing a chronology kind of a thing in, across uh, different cases or we could be looking for similarities in the cases we could be looking for differences in the cases or we could be seeing these cases as contributing to a theoretical model so there are uh, different uh, 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 things that a particular case study would do so this uh, instrumental case study could just involve a single case where we just focus on issue or concern and then select one case to illustrate that issue so the, the, it could be based on the research questions that we've identified or or as as uh, uh, scholars have suggested a puzzlement that needs to be uh, solved or or a need for a general understanding and the reason that we get that use that particular case is that we may get insight into these questions or the answer to these puzzlements or or uh, the requirement for this general understanding will be solved if we uh, study that one single uh, instrumental case so an uh, instrumental case can also involve uh, the use of just a single case also we might be using multiple uh, cases so one issue or concern is, is is selected and then we select multiple case studies to illustrate the issue so we might be selecting several programs from several different uh, research sites or multiple programs within a single site so so we purposefully select these multiple cases to show different perspectives on the so same issue so the idea is to first identify these issues and then to look for cases either to uh, to to justify uh, justify a particular issue that we have identified or or to show it, it in opposition to those issues that have been uh, identified so uh, uh, it's time now to talk about the case study research design and it uh, constitutes uh, these uh, five uh, different uh, uh, themes so the first of all it, it is dependent on the uh, research questions or what are the questions that this case study uh, seeks to answer then the propositions it did, uh, 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 constitutes for itself the cases the case whether it has to uh, think about a particular case or cases then we link the data to the propositions that we've identified and then we have to have a criteria for uh, interpreting the findings so in the next few slides we are going to talk about these uh, five structures of the case study design so as we just suggested uh, uh, this is uh, uh, the uh, uh, you know first of all we have to uh, identify whether the research problem can be best examined using a case study approach and the researcher has to be very clear with this answer before he gets on with the case study uh, method then identify the intent and the case or the cases so what is the intent so whether the intent is uh, intrinsic or instrumental as we just saw and whether we should select just a single case or multiple cases and even in multiple cases is it, is it from the same research site or is it from uh, different research sites then we uh, develop procedures for conducting an extensive data collection so we draw on multiple data sources and we'll talk about what these data sources could be and then we uh, 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 select an analysis approach that how do we uh, analyze these cases what are the uh, themes on which we uh, create these uh, uh, descriptions and, and uh, contextual in, uh, uh, information and then we report the interpreted meaning of the case uh, learn by using case assertions so using vignettes and, and assertions we'll see that how we report these case studies so these are the five uh, steps uh, involved in this uh, uh, case study research method so first of all we begin with the research questions so we have to first uh, be very clear about whether the research questions are relevant for uh, such an approach so whether uh, uh, the how or why and all such things are are are, are right to uh, justify the use of a case study approach so we could be explaining some contemporary circumstances or why and how some some social phenomenon works so uh, uh, when when uh, these questions require an extensive and in-depth description that also is a, is a very good way of uh, 
deciding that this could, uh, the, the uh, case study method could be an appropriate method for that. We then have to decide on the intent of the case study and how do we select a case or cases. And uh, we've already discussed about the uh, intent. It could be intrinsic where that a single case is represented of some important or relevant phenomenon or whether we identify themes across different cases. So whether the intent is intrinsic or instrumental, whether we talk of just one single case or we, whether we see multiple cases to talk about certain themes or certain phenomenon. And then we decide whether it will be a single case or whether it will be a collective case, whether it will be multiple site or whether it will be within site. And that's where we uh, look for possibilities of purposeful sampling. So it's, it's generally we are looking for cases which display or, or which will provide us with answers to these questions. So we might have different perspectives. Uh, so we might select uh, cases which show different perspectives on the same problem or, 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 or which show the same process. So in cases, uh, in, in many uh, situations, we might be just looking for ordinary cases of, uh, which, which represent the phenomenon or cases which are accessible or cases which are very unusual. So we have to make these decisions before we uh, continue with the research process. So as we discussed, the data collection is an important part of this uh, case study research method and that data collection could include uh, documents so there could be lots and uh, lots of documents that we will have to uh, study it could be archival records it could be interviews with with people or group of people it could be a direct ob uh, it could be direct observation where we, where we just uh, uh, there as as as, as an uh, uh, dispassionate observer or we could be present there as a participant observer or we could be studying uh, physical artifacts it could uh, be audiovisual material or it could be uh, any other material relevant to the case. So there are different ways of data collection. So it's not just interviews or it's not just only published documents, but there are uh, very many, uh, uh, as, as we identified, at least six different uh, uh, kinds of data that we'll need to study for, for a case study research. And the analysis uh, consists of making a detailed description of the case. So we'll have to, as we su suggested uh, earlier as well, the detailed description is important and the setting is, is extremely important. So, so uh, if you're using, for example, uh, chron chronology, then we might have to provide the, uh, the multiple sources of data to determine evident, uh, evidence for each step or phase in the evolution of the case. So how, how has it evolved from this point to this point uh, using multiple sources of data and using multiple sources of evidence as well. Uh, we might uh, be looking for a categorical aggregation as far as interpretation is concerned. So we might seek a collection of instances from the data and some issue relevant meanings will emerge out of that. So we just uh, aggregate the ca uh, uh, categories that we have identified in the, uh, 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 you know, six kinds of data that we've just uh, uh, discussed. Or we could be just talking about the direct interpretation where the uh, researcher looks at a single instance and draws meaning out of it or, or tries to establish pattern out of it and even looks for a correspondence or some kind of an association between two or more categories. So as, as you can understand that there is a, is a, uh, a quantitative approach here as well uh, when we are talking of these interpretations. So looking at associations between categories or looking for patterns in, in those uh, categories. Or we could be using a cross case synthesis where uh, 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 Yin, for example, suggests that a word table can be created to display the data from, from individual uh, cases according to some uniform framework. So we have this uh, cross case synthesis where we try and see that what are these uh, elements in these different cases and we try and see whether we can build up uh, some, some uniform framework out of that. And we also have a, a naturalistic generalization from analyzing the data. So uh, we provide the uh, input for people to generalize from. So the analysis approach, it could be a holistic analysis of the entire case where we are, we are providing a, 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 a holistic uh, a, a description of the case. It could be an embedded analysis of a few specific aspects of the cases. So we are providing an embedded understanding of that. It could be focusing on a fee, few key issues. So we might have identified those fee, uh, these key issues in, in, in the cases and we analyze those themes. So uh, this is just a repetition of what we've just discussed earlier. 
so we identified issues within each case and look for common themes that transcend the cases so these common themes are present in all the uh, cases that we are studying so for uh, multiple cases we have to have a dis detailed description of each case and themes within the case uh, and which is uh, it's called a within case analysis and uh, following that we have a cross case analysis so we when we are using multiple cases first the within case analysis followed by a thematic analysis of the cases which is a, a kind of a cross case analysis the uh, case study ap approach presents a lot of writing challenges as well because as we've seen there are uh, different kinds of evidences we just discussed six different kinds of data so uh, the, this, there's a, a very different kind of a skill set required in weaving this evidence into a coherent narrative because there are so many different uh, uh, data types there are so many different kind of themes that we've uh, understood and it, it might be going in different directions so weaving this uh, uh, evidence into a coherent narrative is, is a very important skill set required for a case study researcher at the same time there is a need to maintain the focus and the direction which have been determined by the specific research questions they are all related to the uh, research question so that focus and that direction has to be there uh, uh, in the document prepared after the case study research so these uh, uh, there have to uh, uh, i mean be these uh, 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 you know plotting of the successive revisions of the explanations or theories so it's an iterative process at at, at a certain stage so uh, we could be using a realistic way of just providing direct matter of fact uh, understanding of, of the case or the cases or we could be providing confessional tales about the uh, focus uh, focusing on the field work rather than the case so, so th th these are the uh, different inputs that we provide to the write, uh, writing process we could be providing these impressionist tales so it could be personalized accounts of the field work uh, we provide uh, vignettes to illustrate as aspects of the case and we'll, talk, uh, we'll be talking about the assertions as well. So these are the inputs that we provide in uh, writing the case study research report. So we, uh, this again is uh, suggested, this theme is being, uh, uh, th this kind of uh, 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 theme is suggested by uh, Robert Stakes as we uh, saw. So the writer opens with a vignette so the reader gets to uh, have a vicarious experience or, or, or a feel of the time and place of the study so that is how you uh, start with a case then the researcher identifies the issue the purpose and the method of the study so that the reader can learn about how the study came to be and what are the important issues or what are the issues that the researcher considers important in that particular case study then we provide or the writer the case study researcher provides the uh, extensive description of the case without any analysis so this is just a, a plain a simple narration so if, if the reader were present in that place you know he would be seeing those kind of things so he provides an extensive description first so starting with a vignette then then the uh, uh, issue the purpose and the method and then the extensive description uh, then after that extensive description we go to the issues so issues are presented the few, few key issues so the reader can understand the complexity of the case as we as, as we have repeated uh, quite a few times today that uh, qualitative research involves a rich understanding and a rich description so there there is a, an element of uh, complexity there so the key issues are uh, uh, presented first and then the complexity builds through references to other research or the writer's understanding of others cases or, or the researcher's understanding of other cases so that's how uh, we build on the uh, uh, complexity and then the several of the issues are probed further so there is a deeper analysis of those issues and the writer brings in both confirming and disconfirming evidence so it is not only one kind of evidence it's the other kind of evidence also that he sees in the cases so as we can understand this is a very important or this is a very convenient uh, linear way of uh, writing down the case study uh, research report so we present assertions on our own so these are these are a summary of uh, what what we understand about the case and whether uh, uh, naturalistic uh, generalizations are possible or whether conclusions arrived at are through the personal experience or or uh, through a vicarious experience for the reader so uh, we, we uh, the the researcher then finally ends with a closing vignette uh, an experiential note to remind the reader that the report is is one person's uh, encounter with a complex case or with complex cases so this is how we uh, complete the writing uh, part of the case study uh, uh, research so uh, uh, this again goes back to the design part of the case study research so uh, 
there are uh, different ways so we could be doing an exploratory case study research we could be doing an explanatory case study research we could be even doing a, a descriptive so it depends on, on the questions for example uh, very similar to uh, an experiment method we could also be uh, discussing about the how and why and uh, uh, focusing on contemporary events and that's where we would be talking about an explanatory case study research method so uh, just like the survey method, uh, method we could also be talking about who what where how many how much and again that will have to focus on the contemporary events it could be very similar to archival analysis as well or it could be like a, a historical method so the case study can involve many of these research questions in different perspectives in certain cases it might uh, uh, depend on, on uh, contemporary events and unlike experimental research it, it does not involve controlling uh, 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 or using a control group So uh, this research design has to provide uh, for, for, for safeguards uh, concerning construct validity, concerning internal validity, concerning external validity, and concerning reliability. So for construct validity, it's important to have uh, multiple sources of evidence, so not just one source of evidence, so that whatever we say we are studying, uh, uh, we, 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 uh, you, that, that part is being justified uh, through construct validity. In the uh, internal validity, that is uh, important to you know do the pattern matching or do some explanation building or even providing uh, a rival explanations so that uh, the the conclusions that we are drawing uh, makes sense uh, internally. So that is uh, this is how we uh, 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 satisfy the internal validity uh, requirements. Or we could also be uh, looking at the external validity. So we we can be using theory in single case studies or using replication logic in multiple case studies so uh, uh, external validity is basically about the same uh, study being replicated in in other cases and reliability if we use the same methods we should be getting the same results so for that we use a case study protocol so that next time you know all, all these steps are there in, in a systematic form or we could be creating a, a case study database or maintaining a chain of evidence so these are the ways in which we can satisfy the conditions of construct validity internal validity external and external validity and reliability as well uh, so case study methods can be used for hypothesis generation so uh, uh, when we using case studies for hypothesis generation and theory development we uh, may, might be using different kinds of cases we might be ex uh, using extreme cases either to justify a theory or, or, or to disprove a theory we might be using the deviant cases so cases which uh, deviate from from the theory that we are try uh, trying to propose it could be critical it could be uh, with maximum variation so case study method can be used for hypothesis generation and uh, theory development as well uh, we also have uh, explanatory uh, case studies which look for common features and and the major dimensions of variation so so we use both the uh, uh, confirming uh, evidence and the disco uh, 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 disconfirming uh, evidence to, to uh, refine and uh, uh, the, the developing explanation so we are providing these explanations based on uh, this confirming evidence and on uh, this confirming evidence and we also use a process of uh, uh, process tracing and we have a, a comparative analysis a qualitative uh, comparative analysis as well so in, in the process tracing method we develop a hypothesis we collect evidences uh, 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 that that these uh, causal uh, mechanisms took place to justify that these causal mechanisms are there or uh, so as, as we suggest we are looking at the explanatory potential of uh, case uh, studies so we try and provide for alternative explanation for these effects also and then we collect evidence that these alternative evidence did not take place or, or they, they did not lead to the effect so when we have identified an effect and we are trying to use case study to uh, use it as an explanation then we have to uh, follow these processes of, of uh, first of all uh, discovering what that causal processes are then uh, collecting evidence to uh, support those uh, causal explanations uh, case study can also uh, contribute to normative theory about what is and what should be valued so it, it uh, can tell us uh, about uh, where are we going who gains or loses is the development desirable what, what if anything should we do about it so case study can help contribute to uh, uh, normative theories as well so so uh, we can do that as as uh, as 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 uh, anthro as anthropologists in a detached th third person sense 
or in, in a committed first person sense as ethicists do and this is being derived from Thatcher. Thank you so much for your participation in this discussion on uh, uh, case uh, study research.